What's good everybody? My name is Jay Fatty. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about how to chop samples. It's going to be an in-depth tutorial talking about zero points, talking about getting the BPM right, talking about finding the right chops, transients, all of that. So let's get right into it. All right, so I have a cymatic sample. I'm not going to pull a sample from a record just to avoid copyright claim, but it's going to be the same thing with the record. Now, a cymatic sample is easier though because it gives you the BPM right off the bat. So I'm at 175 BPM. Just set the master BPM to that and pull your sample in. Now, if your sample doesn't give you a BPM, you're going to have to find that. And a lot of old school records aren't on an exact BPM. So it's not going to be a whole number like this, 175. A lot of samples will be like, you know, for example, 95.741 or some, some crazy number like that. So you're going to have to get... Uh, pretty damn close to the the BPM you need that otherwise your chopping may sound really off and not go well with your drums when you try to get that so keep that in mind if you want a video on the best way to find BPM for samples let me know and I'll do one on that all right so let's talk a little bit about zero point crossing okay all a zero point crossing means is when you take a slice out of a chop if you slice right at a zero point it's gonna loop better Okay, it's it's a little hard to explain, but just bear with me. Let's play a part of this sample and show you what I'm talking about. All right, so for example, if we chop right here at the end of bar four, the start of bar five, that's going to be a zero point crossing because the 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 sound the the loop kind of ends there. So like, think about it. If we listen to this. Has that build up and then it has for the last part here just that hell note and you know that that's going to be the end because as soon as that hell note is done it loops into the next part it's so important to have it on the bpm because if it's right on bpm you can just slice on the actual grid and it will usually be right so for example the zero point crossing over here if we just brought this up and muted it did something like this this should loop nicely that's all a zero point crossing is is slicing it at one of those points to get it to loop correctly now there's other zero point crossings like for example we could even just do a slice on each bar take these out and just this one bar would loop Here there's actually some kind of chop that's not looping as well so it's not as good of a zero point crossing and if we actually look at the waveform we can see that ourselves like look at this waveform it's more chunky compared to when it loops we're gonna make this a little bigger here see this waveform it's way too chunky compared to the the start of the next loop so that's why it's kind of got a little popping sound Now, when we had just the original uh, two bars looping, there's still a little bit of a blip right there. As you can see, that waveform, there's like no sound, but we can actually just double click it and trim it, and then that would fix that. But if we trim it, it could also take it off BPM. But let's see. See, there is a little bit more of a blip. Now, I'm in FL Studio 21 beta, so I have these crossfades. I can just do something like this, and it would take that uh, click out or that pop. So, but since most of you probably aren't going to be in the FL Studio 21 beta, what you can do is just double click the sample and then go to generic bleeding under the declicking mode. All right, and once we do that, we can actually drag this back out to four bars and then just split that second bar. And when we do that, you're going to see it has a fade in and out. Now, if we close this and bring this back. There's not really a click and pop there now. All right, now let's get into talking about transients. So if you can't really find a zero point crossing, the best way is to look at the transients, all right? And if you're not sure what a transient is, it's literally just these peaks and these valleys, these top parts of the waveform, okay? That's all a transient is. So when you see a waveform to really define the zero point crossing, all it really is is 
a flat point, okay? So there's tons of valleys and peaks inside a waveform, but that zero point crossing is a flat point. And 90% of the time, a zero point crossing point is going to be right at the start of a big transient, okay? So as you can see here, if we look at this waveform, it gets high right here in the middle of this bar and then it goes down and then right at bar 17, it hits with those new transients. That's because it's a new note or a new chord. Since it's a start, I already know right there is somewhere where I'm going to want to cut and get that chop. Then we listen to it and see how long the chord or the note is dragged out. So once again, since this is on BPM, it's only two bars. And that would loop together well if we brought them down here. practice with sampling and practice the waveform it's it's definitely a skill in itself like you have to you have to really know where to chop and that is just going to take doing a bunch of beats with a bunch of different samples until you got it down it's not for everyone but i love sampling it's probably one of my favorite things to do i definitely like doing it more than making melodies but it's not for everyone like i said this is just sampling in the playlist this is really bare bones like there's a lot of tools and and VSTs and, and effects that can help you sam while sampling and actually take a big part of the process out. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to see any more on sampling, let me know down in the comments. If this video brought you value, please leave a like, hit subscribe, and hit the little bell. Make sure you stay safe, stay striving, and always be getting it. Much love, y'all. Peace.